Okay, so in our last video, we worked out the electron configuration and electron energy diagram for carbon, and there's a few things I'd like to elaborate on here. One of them is that even if it's not said so, what chemists are typically interested in is the ground state electron configuration. So there's many electron configurations that can exist for a carbon atom, but the reason that I wrote and diagrammed this one in particular is because it's the lowest energy possibility for arranging the electrons. So when I do the ground state electron configuration, I'm giving the arrangement of electrons that would yield the lowest energy and most stable carbon atom that we can have. So if you put two electrons in the 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbital, and two electrons in different orbitals in the 2p sublevel, with the same spin, then you get the lowest energy configurations. And oftentimes I'm almost bummed out that this is the way they approach it because a lot of the more interesting chemistry is when you have a non-ground state electron configuration. And that happens when like a chlorophyll molecule absorbs a photon and starts on the process to make molecules out of the energy with using the energy of sunlight and such things. So very important that the ground state is the lowest energy configuration and that's our starting point for understanding atoms but there's other configurations that exist they're just generally higher in energy so what I figured might be helpful is to review some of the rules for writing the ground state configuration which I briefly mentioned I think last time but going over those and then show what happens when you violate these rules hopefully will help you to understand electron configurations a little better. So Aufbau, which literally means building up in German, is you place the electrons in the lowest energy orbitals that are available. So when I was building up the carbon atom, I started with the 1s orbital, which is the lowest energy orbital that you can have, and I placed a maximum number of electrons of 2 in that orbital. So out bow, you place them in the lowest energy orbitals that are available first. For Hund's rule, in its long form, it's Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. If there are multiple orbitals of the same energy, you place electrons in different orbitals with the same spin, so the same direction of the arrow, before pairing electrons in the same orbital. So you saw when we had two electrons to place in the p sublevel, we had three orbitals at the same energy, the p, x, p, y, and p, z, and we put two electrons in different orbitals with the same spin, both arrows were facing up, and we didn't pair the electrons in the same orbital. We only do that when we run out of orbitals to use, then we have to start putting the second electron in each orbital. So Hund's rule, very important as well. And then the Pauli exclusion principle, Pauli exclusion principle, there's different ways to word this. Um, one is that each electron has to have a unique set of four quantum numbers. But since we're not talking about the quantum numbers so much, that might not be so useful. But a good way to phrase this would be if you put two electrons in the same orbital, they must have different spins. So if one of them's an up arrow, the other one has to be a down arrow. And that 
sort of ensures that they don't occupy the same physical space and don't conflict with each other. If you have two electrons in the same orbital with different spins, they can coexist there and it'll be fine. So outbound principle, Hund's rule, and Pauli exclusion principle, you might want to commit to memory so you can recognize when they're followed and when they're not followed. And if you're ever trying to write the ground state electron configuration for an atom, you have to follow these three rules to make sure the electrons are placed correctly. So there's our first carbon example. And what I often like to do then is to show examples where the principles are violated. So if you have carbon, and we know carbon has six electrons, the carbon atom has six electrons, how can we place the electrons so that we violate one of the rules, and what's the consequence of that? So Hund violation has only to do with the P sublevel. So if you're doing Hund rule, you would put two electrons in the 1s, two electrons in the 2s, and then if you're going to follow Hund's rule, when you get to the 2p sublevel, you would spread the electrons out and put them in different orbitals. But if you're going to violate Hund's rule, then you're going to pair the electrons up prior to spreading them out. So that's not the order you're supposed to do it for the ground state. And what this indicates here is the two electrons that are repelling each other have been forced together into the same space, and that's going to require energy. So this is a higher energy or excited state, not the ground state. So this would be an acceptable configuration if you wanted a higher energy carbon atom, but if you're looking for the ground state, we unfortunately did not follow Hund's rule, and we got an excited state. Another one that we can do, similar, 1s2, 2s2, now we go to the 2p, we can put the electrons in different orbitals according to Hund's rule, but have them have different spins. So again, this is a higher energy or excited state because we didn't arrange the electrons in the lowest energy state according to Hund's rule. In this case, they're not of the same spin. They've got opposite spins. And so this is going to be, again, a higher energy state not the ground state, because we didn't follow Hund's rule. Hund's rule, the two electrons would be in different orbitals with the same spin. Very important. The other rules we had, Pauli exclusion principle is really easy to recognize in electron energy diagram. So again, I'm going with the standard orbital ordering, 1s, 2s, 2p. That's low to high energy. We're going to put electrons in the lowest energy first. And then if we wanted to violate the Pauli exclusion principle, what would we have to change? So here's the ground state configuration. And what I did correctly was when I put two electrons in the same orbital, I gave them opposite spins, which is following the Pauli exclusion principle. If I gave two electrons the same spin, and put them in the same orbital, that would be a Pauli violation. So this one is a Pauli exclusion principle violation, and that's impossible. It's not just an excited state, it's something that won't happen. So when you're looking at electron configurations or thinking about where electrons are in atoms, if they're in the same orbital, they have to have opposite spins, or it doesn't work. The other principle we talked about, outbound principle, we always started filling at the bottom. The lowest energy orbitals get filled up first before we get to higher energy levels. If there are many thousands or millions of possible ways to violate the outbound principle. What I'm going to do here is simply leave a space in the 1s orbital and when I'm placing the six electrons for carbon, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, I will follow the other rules because if I'm explicitly just going to violate the alpha violation, I want to hold to the other rules. Polly is obeyed over here, Hund is obeyed over there. But what I've done is rather than completing the filling of the 1S before moving on, I left this incomplete and put that electron up here. So this can happen in real life. If I were to take a carbon atom and hit it with just the right amount of energy to span these two energy levels, a 1S electron could absorb that energy, go up to a higher energy state, get out of the ground state to a higher energy state. So this one would be an excited state where there's more energy than there needs to be in this electron arrangement. Some of the, one of the electrons is farther away from the nucleus and at higher energy than it would be if it were where it would like to be in the lowest energy place. So in promoting an electron from the 1s up to the 2p, we add energy to the atom and generate an excited state. This is the Aufbau violation because the electrons are not in the lowest energy states they could be in. They, some of them have been promoted to higher energy orbitals and that's an Aufbau violation. So here's uh, some of the things to think about and reflect on what happens when we obey the rule and get the ground state electron configuration for something like carbon, which we showed explicitly in the last video, and what the violations do for us. Or, and do for us is a good way to put it because Mother Nature oftentimes we generate higher energy states for electrons and molecules in order to do work. But again, our fundamental understanding of atoms and molecules we want to start with the lowest energy, most stable configurations, and that's how things exist most of the time.